Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Beretta 9mm USA here, and today we are going to bring you an exciting video. This is going to be the top 5 handguns for 2021. As you may know, we like to do one of these videos per year, showing off what we think are the best firearms for you to purchase. These are guns that we have already thoroughly tested and reviewed on our channel, and that is why we think we can fully recommend them to you. So it's a little bit unlike the other channels who have top five guns that are new to the market. They are not tested, they are not proven, and yet they're the top five list. So with those as ground rules, here's our list for 2021. Coming in at number five on our list, the Mossberg MC2C. This pistol right here was the biggest surprise of all the handguns we tested in the last 12 months, and it was very easy after its flawless performance for young Beretta and I to put it on this top five list. Some of the good features are, it has a DLC finish slide, it has True Glow Tritium Pro Night Sights, a 13 round flush fit magazine right here, and then it also comes with a 15 round extended magazine. So you have your choice of which one you want to use or carry or use for home defense, defense of when you're in your automobile, your daily carry, however you want to use this pistol. It is smooth shooting, it is soft shooting, and carries plenty of firepower in 9mm if that's what you're interested in. It also has a wonderful trigger. Look at those sights right there. The sights are terrific. Get the night sights here, guys. Don't get the cheap sights. Get the nice sights. Those are awesome. And the trigger, as Young Beretta just said, it does have a wonderful trigger on it. Here it is with its safety out and the trigger is in uh, cocked position. As you pull the trigger, it almost breaks at a 90 degree angle. There's a little bit of creep there to make sure that's what you want to do is pull the trigger. And then it snaps. On the reset, very springy, pushes your finger forward. Again, you're pulling back on it. It has a little movement right there as you saw and then breaks again. I found it a very, very effective trigger for home defense or self-defense. We were getting very consistent hits all the time with this pistol. It just shot extremely well. It was very surprising, especially coming from Mossberg, who obviously is not known for pistols. They are known for their very high quality pump action shotguns and semi-automatic shotguns. Yeah, I did not test the uh, MC one yeah. is that what it's called so i had no experience on that this was the first one i got my hands on and it knocked my socks off i yeah. was totally impressed with it i bought this gun as i said in the video guys if you want more information please go back to that video and watch it because we shot the heck out of it from distances out to like 21 22 yards and it's just you know hitting everything you aim at yeah, this is a true Glock 19 competitor. It may not have the track record of the Glock 19, obviously, yet, but this is going to be a solid seller for Mossberg, no question. Yeah, I think this pistol will sell a lot once people realize how good it really is. And like I said, my recommendation, guys, get these night sights on it. With the night sights, it's $595. So figure $100, $110 for the night sights. You're paying, you know, just under $400 for this pistol. And for that, you get two magazines and basically a flawless handgun that shot fantastic for us. I couldn't speak higher for this, this handgun. If you're looking for something that's in that kind of range, $500 to $600, get this and get it with the night sights. That's my recommendation. And this comes in at number five. Fantastic. has a winner on their hands all right guys coming in at number four on our top five handguns for 2021 is this springfield ronin commander currently it is in a tt gun leather holster so we'll take it out of the holster here and as you can tell it is the classic two-tone this particular springfield ronin commander has lock grips on it these are the classic Boondock Saint style with the penny inlaid in the grip itself. Very striking and unusual, and a lot of people like these grips. Young Beretta liked them so much that he has a second pair on the way. Speaking of Young Beretta, this is Young Beretta's pistol. 
and he is a huge fan of all of the Springfield Ronin 1911s, and I gotta tell you the truth, I am too. At first, we were kind of questioning whether we like the plastic or polymer trigger on it, but it has no interference at all with the quality or the way that this pistol operates and shoots. They were nearly 100% reliable, with no problems whatsoever in four different handguns that we tried. Yeah, this pistol is just fantastic. And this is actually uh, currently, you guys, my daily carry. I switched out my two uh, J-frames that I was carrying and started carrying uh, this Ronin Commander here. I did some stuff to this pistol, so let me bring that up real fast. have a Wilson Combat Extended magazine release on it here. I did uh, flush the uh, slide stop there, so that's nice. I'm not going to have any issues now with possibly pressing up against it when I'm shooting and pressing it out a little bit and locking up the gun. I also did put a Wilson Combat spring and uh, recoil plug in it. So you can see that looks a little bit different compared to your stock base Ronin pistol. And that's pretty much all I did to it. Of course, you have a Wilson Combat low profile steel base plate magazine in it right now. So that's actually the mag I'm running in it for self defense. This pistol is just outstanding. Um, the feature set with this and what you're getting as far as for your price point is just a 10. As far as your features, You've got a forged slide, forged barrel, forged aluminum alloy frame here, fully checkered mainspring housing. This pistol does utilize a lot of cast parts, but uh, at the price point here, you cannot beat it. And the proven quality of the parts being used here. Let's talk about the sights here real fast. You have a red fiber optic front sight, so that's extremely high visibility. You have a two dot rear with serrations on it to reduce glare. Really nice sight picture on this 1911. Uh, you have a matte style finish up tops to reduce glare also and then you of course have your polished blued sides here on the slide. The frame has a satin Cerakote finish on it as far as your aluminum alloy frame. You can see that you don't have any checkering or anything like that on the front strap of this but not having the front strap checkering didn't affect the overall shootability of this pistol. Let me show you guys the trigger on this thing real fast. Even though it is a polymer trigger shoe here the trigger is fantastic. Here's your take up right here, you hit the wall, very smooth clean break, reset, very springy, very positive, another clean break right there. I just love this gun, it is uh, a go to for me as well as the 9mm variant as far as a concealed carry gun right now. So if you guys are interested in this pistol, it has an MSRP of $849 and at that price, it is a screaming deal. Don't you think brought us here? Yeah, and most of them that we're seeing guys are hearing back from are people are buying them around seven eighty to eight hundred. So for seven eighty to eight hundred, you add the grips on yourself, make it a little bit different than everyone else's. You've got a fantastic entry level nineteen eleven right there that will not let you down. Yeah. So obviously you were you liked them so much that you bought both the 45 and the 9 millimeter. So two of them for you. I've got the full size Ronin in 45 ACP. So we do have multiple right now uh, going through all the tests and tweaks and competition shoots and comparison shoots and everything else that we're gonna do with them over the next couple of years, guys. So you will see these pistols again. But uh, for now, it did finish in our top five. Really nice side picture on this thing. Here we go. This thing shoots really well. All right, guys, coming in at number three on our top five list for 2021 is this very high quality snub nose 357 Magnum Smith & Wesson revolver. This is the Smith & Wesson PC gun. It is a 686. So the Performance Center has done their tweaking and customizations of this revolver, and it came out fantastic. It is a terrific shooter. We try to add at least one revolver to our top five list every year, and it's usually our favorite shooter of the year. So whatever revolver we liked best usually makes it on the list that following year for a recommendation. This revolver did go back to Smith & Wesson to get a fix on it because it was having some light primer strikes. That problem has been solved. The pistol was returned to us in great condition. So that Smith & Wesson lifetime warranty continues to speak for itself. You can buy one of these Smith & Wesson products and be rest assured that you've got a great warranty.
Just as a quick side note, you guys, I wanted to tell you about a company that we are going to be working with in 2021, and that would be Zeta 6. Zeta 6 makes speed loaders for your revolvers. They make them for J frames, Ruger LCRs, and K frames, as seen right here. This is uh, one of their styles that they make. They also make uh, a couple other different versions, like the one you see right there. But see, so yeah, we're going to be testing out these speed loaders in 2021, and we are very much so looking forward to doing so. And uh, I think you guys are going to be very interested in their products and what they have to offer. Look forward to seeing those in the very near future. All right, guys, I'm going to cover some of the specifics on this revolver. This is a 7-shot, as you can see, the 7X right there. And you have 7 holes right there in your cylinder. You can see that the cylinder is unfluted, so there's a little bit more weight added to this revolver. This revolver comes in at a weight of 34.4 ounces. This revolver currently is wearing a set of Altamont grips. I can't remember the exact uh, name of these specific grips, but you can see that they're in the silver back wood here. Just fantastic quality on these grips. Fully exposed back strap lets you get closer to that trigger to be able to partake in that wonderful performance interaction. You can see you have a teardrop style hammer right here. Look at your sights here. Traditional Smith & Wesson rear sight, fully adjustable for both windage and elevation. Fully serrated top strap here to reduce glare. And you have an extremely high visibility front sight. So you have some orange fluorescent paint right there as far as a high visibility stripe in that front sight. Great sight picture on this revolver. Let's try out this trigger here from double action. Very smooth and consistent trigger coming in, I'm guessing at six pounds, maybe six and a half pounds. It's just absolutely wonderful. Really allows you to get those very accurate shots and double action. Single action, you just blow on it, man and it's gonna go off. Love that uh, over travel screw in the back of the Smith & Wesson trigger here. It's a very high quality performance center revolver here from Smith & Wesson. If you guys are at all in the market for a wheel gun, I highly suggest you guys go check this thing out. Yes, the revolver had some issues out of box, which if you, if you go watch the review, you'll see that, but past that, you guys, after getting it fixed here, this revolver has been nothing but aces. It is just a top quality product from Smith & Wesson. The MSRP on this 686 is $1,096. What I liked about it most was the trigger and the accuracy out of this small barrel. Yeah. If you would have brought this out to me and said, hey, shoot this from 22, 23, 24 yards away, and I would have been thinking maybe I can hit the target or maybe I won't. And this thing was just about shooting possibles from that kind of distance. And as you guys know, I mean, my experience with the revolvers is only a couple of years. So... Have I gotten better? Yeah, I imagine I have, but from shooting from 22 to 25 yards away, I my revolver skills really usually aren't that great. And this was the star of the show. So I enjoyed it very much. Yep. And that is why this revolver came in at number three on our top five list for 2021. Wow. Good job. Pulled one shot. Good job, dude. All right, guys, coming in at number two, and this is a direct competitor for the number one spot. So there's your hint of what's coming. This is the new Wilson Combat Xperior 1911. This is an all forged steel, no mem, no cast parts. Everything is bulletproof on this, as far as the parts are concerned. So your grip safety here, your safety here, your slide release, everything is bulletproof parts from Wilson Combat. Top shelf stuff from beginning to end. There's no question about it. This pistol comes in at 42 ounces with the magwell on it, which is perfectly done. Great job here by the folks at Wilson Combat. Everything is as expected. Except for when we first shot the pistol, we did have a couple um, with a failure to feeds, young brother. Failure to go into battery. Yeah, and that turned out to be caused by the shock buffer that Wilson Combat put into this 1911 from the factory. So was it a combination of the shock buffer and the particular ammo we were using? I guess that's a possibility. What we did, we diagnosed the problem and we pulled the shock buffer out and then all of a sudden the pistol 
has been running 100% ever since. Did it again. See how much it's out of battery here? Yeah. Okay, that could be caused from my left hand um, not holding it tight enough, limp wristing it. But that's no excuse because it also had that problem just a minute ago when you were shooting strong hand. Yeah, I don't know. It's out of battery again, yeah. Hold on, hold on. See that? Okay, hit it. Can you get it with the camera? Yeah, go for it. Okay. A little strange. I think I may have to try to, I have several Wilson Combat Springs that I bought to change the springs out in my, my uh, use less bear. So I may have to change something out on this. This 1911 does have some great features on it from a front fiber optic sight. The rear sight on this Wilson Combat is the full adjustable battle sight. It's adjustable here for windage and adjustable here for elevation. So it's a great little sight on it. And I have come to like the fiber optics, though I think I do like the green a little bit better than the red. As far as the pistol is concerned, the serrations here and in the front are very well done. A little bit wider than normal and a little bit more elevation to the serrations. So it makes it really easy to be able to grab it and work the pistol. So everything is super tight. I mean, it's very well made. You can see the fully serrated rear right there and the pistol also has serrations on top to reduce glare. The Xperior also does have a heavy chamfer to the slide, uh, as you can see right there. Looks pretty good. The pistol also does have ball cuts to uh, the slide, so it's not your standard GI style cut in the front. And the barrel hood is fluted. fluted so it's, you know, it looks just like they wanted to put it out as, as pretty much a loaded pistol for a somewhat reasonable price. This thing comes in at $37.50. So 37.50 for the 45 ACP and I think the 9mm is slightly more than that. Yeah, I think the uh, fluted chamber looks fantastic. Also, Wilson does a really good job on recessed crown on the end of the barrel. Yeah, it looks very nice. Great job there, Wilson. And this is just high quality right here too. This Wilson Combat bushing right here. And their end caps are made very well. We've ordered them and put them in different handguns because they're made so well. So on this particular Wilson Combat, I went with the black armor tough on the slide. And then on a frame, I went with the full uh, gray armor tough on the entire frame of the handgun. The texture pattern on this Xperior is the track pattern, they call it. And basically it's raised like parts that are then kind of finished off at the top. So it's not overly aggressive or tearing up your skin. And yet it gives you a really good grip on this handgun. And that's not only on the G10 grip panels, but also on the front of the pistol as far as the frame is concerned and on the um, main spring housing. It's nice how that works right there. And it's kind of cut right there to aid and carry. Everything is uh, exact, just like you think it would be on a Wilson Combat. So the pistol does not disappoint, but it does have a high entry price, unlike some of the other pistols that came earlier on this list. How's the trigger on this pistol, Bruce? The trigger on this Wilson is pretty excellent. It is the long trigger. It is the solid trigger right here. So if it seems a little bit longer than some of the you know government models and stuff like that, it is. That's the way I ordered it. If you look right here, it's got that much movement in it, that much uptake or take up. It's very little. It looks like about a quarter of an inch. And then you hit some resistance right here about three and three quarters pounds later or just under four is what i think it is and it snaps like glass reset about a quarter of an inch push back on it you can tell it's not moving at all and it snaps again so it's an excellent trigger there's a little bit of movement up and down 
See if I can show that to you as you start to go back with it. You've got just a tad bit of movement up and down. And then side to side is also like one-tenth of an inch. I mean, it's very minor. But it does have a little bit of movement up and down and a little bit of movement side to side, which we're not seeing in some of the other high-dollar custom 1911s. Yeah, so a gun that I compare that to as far as what we're talking about as far as movement and the trigger. Um, some of our less mirrors are a little bit tighter fit as far as the trigger movement and also my uh, new Alchemy pistol I just picked up does not have any movement in the trigger at all. Rob Shawland over at Alchemy Custom Weaponry. <laughs> He's a magician! <laughs> That's all I can say. Yeah. He does true magic uh, to his alchemy pistols, and the trigger is just superb on that pistol. Yeah, we have not shot that gun yet, guys, and that's why it did not make this list. If it would have been considered for this list, it just did not come in in time. So we will test it, evaluate it, and maybe it will make it to next year's list. Uh, no promises, but we do promise to review it, and that will be coming. So if you're interested in alchemy custom weaponry at all, you want to make sure you stay tuned to this channel. The Wilson Combat Xperior. Today hanging out in my TT gun leather holster right here. Getting as much mileage out of that holster as possible with my 1911 collection. All right, we're gonna put some rounds through the Wilson Combat here. And coming in at number one for our top five handguns of 2021 is this Les Bear Hemi 572 1911. This is one of the best 1911s in the world as far as I'm concerned. Young Brett and I shot it after it came in on a special order and it was absolutely flawless, absolutely dead on. Did you get the one and a half inch guarantee at like 50 yards with this handgun? Yeah, I did. Yeah. So this thing, I remember shooting it, um, it. from like... 18, 20 yards away offhand, and it was shooting just over an inch group. I was just amazed with the accuracy on this one and your American handgunner. Yeah. And I know you got the accuracy guarantee on that one too. So I'm not exactly sure what Les is doing over there on, on the testing of these things. I've heard mixed things that they're actually testing them at that distance. I've also heard that they're testing them at a little bit you know, closer distance, but they're shooting those type of groups. Um, but I'll tell you one thing for sure is both of your 1911s that have that guarantee are very high performers. Yeah. And this 1911, just like many 1911s from Les Bear, are built hard fit. Sometimes, you know, they're not going to seem the same as far as how they turn out. This 1911 uh, was that way directly from the factory. We've come across a couple that uh, weren't exactly hard fit. Let's just say they were more like a Wilson as far as the fit to them. But uh, this 1911 out of the gate felt very much so hard fit. That hard fit feeling is very much so something that I love to see in a 1911. It just makes it more enjoyable when manipulating the pistol and shooting the pistol. From my experience, that's what I believe anyway. Yeah, and you ordered this with about every available option that you can get on it. The base model MSRP as of right now, before any price change in 2021, is $2,853. And that is before any possible upgrades that I've made to this pistol, like the one and a half inch guarantee, the serrations on the top of the slide to reduce glare, and also the fully serrated rear of the slide. You can see this thing is dirty because I've shot it a lot and I really haven't been taking care of this thing, I tell you what. <laughs> haven't cleaned it yet. Um, but yeah, you can see uh, how well fit the uh, bushing is there in the front. And this gun, again, it's just very tight. You can hear that less bare pop right there. But it doesn't really have that less bare, hard to manipulate slide anymore. Um, that I'm experiencing still on uh, my Les Bear UTC that I ordered that does not have the one and a half inch guarantee. Go ahead and talk about the grips on here and uh, anything else you can think of. How about the difference in the safety? Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. The grips that are on this pistol right now are not the stock grips. The stock grips are black VZs. These are a pair of Lock Ops textured grips from Lock Grips. As you know, Lock Grips has been a great supporter of our channel. Um, We've done a lot of videos featuring their products, and these grips on this pistol just look absolutely amazing. Moving on, um, as far as the safety here, 
The safety I did not ask for to be hard chrome. So that's why it is a uh, brush stainless. <laughs> it just looks more like a titanium safety against the hard chrome frame and slide on this pistol, which is kind of funny. But yeah, so that was uh, a difference compared to your stock Hemi pistol. As far as uh, one thing that the Hemis do all have is they have your DuPonted controls traditionally. So you can see the trigger here has been DuPonted, your slide release, your plunger here, and as well as your hammer is DuPonted. Also the pins and stuff have been DuPonted as well as the barrel. I don't like the DuPont control on the safety. I'm surprised honestly I kept it on the trigger, but I like the looks of the black trigger. But the safety being DuPonted kind of bothered me on Breda Senior's uh, Les Bear Super Tac. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that's why I wanted it to be uh, hard chrome. So again, it doesn't bother me as if it was DuPonted. The problem with the DuPont, it just doesn't feel right to me. I don't know, it could be just me. It was a little uh, nitpicky thing I found on the Super Tac when I was messing with it. You're not the only one. I have actually heard that complaint a couple times from um, subscribers and viewers that they just didn't care for my Super Tac because of the DuPont finish to everything. Um, one guy went as far as saying it looks like a paint job, you know, <laughs> over top of your 1911. And, you know, I wasn't going to argue with him on that. It doesn't look exactly perfect. It definitely doesn't look like this. Yeah. You know, um, but I got it because it was a super tack and I got it because it's supposed to be, you know, basically corrosion proof. No, no rust, no elements can get to it or whatnot. And it's got more of a tactical approach than it does something pretty and shiny like this. So that's why I have it. It's one of many that I own. And I have no plans of letting it go, even if it does look like a paint job. Yeah. Um, well, I think I definitely want to cover on this 1911. One thing I love about all the Les Bear 1911s is the hand-done front strap checkering. This is done at 30 LPI on the front strap. And this pistol, as well as the Boss, are the only two pistols that I can think of other than the UTC, actually. So there's three pistols right there that actually have the mainspring housing done from Les Bear without having to option it out. So this is a 20 lines per inch hand-done hand checkered mainspring housing on this pistol. That option right there for that mainspring housing is like $140, $120. And because of that, if I were you guys, if you don't own a Lesper 1911 yet, or you're looking at it and you're highly considering purchasing one, uh, I would purchase a Hemi, Boss, or the UTC because all three of those pistols have the really nice hand done mainspring housing and it's not gonna be the you know cheaper vertically serrated mainspring housing. Yeah, there's definitely a difference. You're absolutely yeah. right. And so if you're gonna change it on a different model from Les Beer, you're gonna actually pay that extra money and I don't think it's worth having to go through the hassle right there. So I'd pick the models that have the mainspring housing done already. Which were what? The UTC, the Boss, and the Hemi. Okay, okay, that makes total sense. I like that. Let me cover the trigger real fast. Show that to you. Here it is, a uh, little bit of up and down movement right there. Very little though, side to side, just a little bit also. So this is actually, this trigger is very much so more like the Wilson Combat. That's your take up. Oh, very clean break. Reset. Wow. Very responsive trigger right there. Yeah. Great springiness to it. it just comes right back out and you press that trigger. It's pretty outstanding. Yeah. So a lot of you are going to ask why we like the Les Bear over the Wilson. I'm going to go ahead and handle that right here in the video before we close up. One of the noticeable differences is the hand done checkering on the front and on the back. These you can really dig into. They're really comfortable and it feels like your hands are locked in. The ones that are done by machine, in my opinion, aren't quite as good. And that's my position on it. Anything else, young bro? Also, the reason why this is number one in the Wilson isn't is because of the problems the Wilson had out right, of the gate. Right. Where this pistol, ever since I picked it up back in March, it's been 100%. Yeah. And I actually, so how I obtained this pistol was I uh, actually put my stimulus money from the first stimulus check down on this pistol. So that was 1200 down. I think I paid 3000 cash for this, you guys, over at our local gun store. So I optioned it out and that's where it came out to. And considering it's base model MSRP, I think I did really well on this pistol. Yeah, we're definitely agreed on it that even though it's his gun, uh, it's slightly better than the Wilson. Uh, the Wilson did have a couple of hiccups coming out of the gate, and that has to count uh, in our ranking structure here. Yeah, and uh, actually, you love this pistol so much that you decided to order one for yourself, correct? Yeah, so we'll see what happens with that when it gets here. Anyway, that's a Hemi 572, but I did order it very traditional, just the way it comes from the factory. I think I added a couple of maybe the top serrations and the back serrations. Yeah, I think you, if I remember right, you left the trigger alone, so that's gonna be skeletonized. Uh, and I left the, the safety. Yeah. yeah, 
And uh, I think you ordered otherwise the exact same way I did as far as serrated top, serrated rear, one and a half inch guarantee at 50 yards. Right, which will be my only less bare pistol out of eight yep. that has a one and a half inch guarantee on it, guys. All right, so that finishes this video. Thanks so much for watching the video, guys. This is our personal take on our top five. So this is from our testing and reviewing. We hope you enjoyed the video. So we'll see you guys on the next video. And remember, your Second Amendment is worth protecting. Target 17 yards away, another Wilson mag.